Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we'll be quickly looking at 5 different Revit tips you can use when modeling rolling. The first one is to do with height correction. Let's see this rolling over here. Do you see that in this example file, Autodesk model this rolling not as a single element, but in two halves, this one here and the second half there. They then try to join them using this rail extension on the top rail element. This bigger rail on top there, that's a top rail element. This looks quite messy and to me, you can use height correction to do this in a much cleaner way. So, let's try to edit this rail here. And just extend it using another sketch line like this. So you have here one, two and three segments. Finish. Now you see why they didn't try to do it as a single element. Because the problem with rolling on stair is that when it goes to the end, when it's leaving the stair, its height can be different from its definition. This type here is defined to be at 1100 above the reference level, but here it must be lower than that height. Not to worry, we can fix this easily with height correction. Firstly, let's work out the distance that we have to raise this segment up. Let's go and make a new dimension. Go to Dimensioned, Aligned Dimensioned. I will now set the work plane to be one of the planes I can see right now. Maybe this one there. And now let's dimension from this face to this top face. I can see now I need to raise that segment by 50 mil. Let's go and select this rolling. Go to Edit Path. Click on the segment you want to raise or lower. Change the height correction to custom. And now in here, you can put in whatever height correction you like. Let's do 50 to raise it up. Click finish to confirm. And now you see that distance is now zero. And our rolling is now correct. All right, tip number two is to do with splitting rollings. Let's say I want to split this rolling here. We can isolate it for now. Now, if you've been using Revit for a few years across different versions, you will know that previously, in earlier Revit version, we couldn't split rowlings easily. Let's say I want to split it here and make an opening in this rowling at this location. It used to be the case that I need to make a copy of this rowling, and then for one copy, I can cut it back. So it goes from here to only there. And for the second copy, I can make it go from here only to there. That will leave me the opening in the middle. But for more recent Revit versions, you can just go to the Modify tab, click on Split, and click anywhere where you want to have the rolling to port. Maybe here, and maybe there. I can now select that middle segment and delete it. As easy as that. So if you haven't upgraded to a Revit version where this feature is possible, I highly recommend that you do. It will save you a lot of time. Anyway, if that's not an option, we can always split it the traditional way. So I will select this one here, make a copy, and paste the copy to the same place. I can now click on one of them, edit path, stop the path here, delete the segments I don't need, and do finish. The same goes for the other segments, but on the opposite direction. So I will split it here instead, and delete this other half. You can see, same result, just lower to implement. Okay, moving on to tip number three. Also in more recent Revit versions, I think it's Revit 2019 and later, you have the option now to host rolling on topography. That solves a massive problem that we had before. When you couldn't host rolling on a terrain, it had to do it by manual height correction. That took forever to do. Now it's super easy. I can now go to architecture, make a new rolling now. It's complaining about the work plane not set up properly for this command. I can now just pick a random level, maybe level 1. That will make the problem go away. Let's start sketching our rolling. And let's say I want to have it go down the hill. So, first segment like this. And the second segment like so. Click finish to confirm. And you can see it's going straight, but if I now do pick new host and select this topography, 
is now closely follow the path that I set out up and down the terrain as well. That's really neat. So we can now move on to tip number four. It's still with the same rolling, but now I can see you sometimes that the top row elements can break. You see, it's breaking there already. The rails below it are doing just fine, but the top rails seem to have a hard time trying to catch up with the new slope of this rolling. You can even take it to the extreme and see how likely it's going to break. If I now edit this path and just make it so this angle is not right, maybe I can do it like this, give it a more acute angle. When I do finish, there's a warning showing up there. But even without it, I can see that top row element is really messing up, you see. The way to fix this, tip number 4, is not to use the top row at all. I know that it tries to help here, but the top row tool doesn't seem to be ready for the action. So now, we can fix this by replacing this top row using one of the rails below it. Let's go to edit type. Under rail structure, click on edit. And now we can insert a new rail to replace the top rail. Actually, before doing so, I need to untick this box first to not use top rail on this rolling type. Now we can go back in there, insert a new rail, set the height to be the original top rail's height, in this case 1100. And for the profile, you can now use the same profile that was used for the top rail, in this case 50 by 50 mil. And even change the material if you like. I will just use the same here. Stainless steel. Click OK to confirm. And you can see, even though it's still not perfect, because our rolling was a bit extreme, it does follow closely the path for this rolling. Anyway, we're not done yet. You can see, because now we don't have the top row element anymore, our balusters don't go all the way up. Let's fix that now. I will turn back on my properties panel. Edit type. Under baluster placement. We can now set this top to be instead of row number 8, it should be row number 9 because that's my top rail. We can now do the same for our start post. Corner post. And an end post. Click OK to confirm. And you can see now, it's almost the same railing as we saw before, but this time with better connection, where you have some extreme corners along the path. Alright, now comes the final tip. Tip number 5 is to do with rail completion. So, if I look in here, I can see at this end, I have this full panel of whatever width I set out in the definition. Let's see what that is. If I go to baluster placement, that width is one meter and a half. So there I can have this full one meter and a half width panel. But if I go to the other end, it's smaller because over here, that's whatever left on the rolling path. So here you are ending up with a more narrow rolling panel or segment. So what if this end here of the rolling is more visible to the user of this building and you want that full width section to be on this end? Well, you may be happy to know, there's no need to redraw this whole rolling. I can just go to Edit Path now, and click on this little blue arrow here to flip the endpoint. So here, at the moment, that's the start point, and that's the end point. I can see that because here, that's where the arrow is pointing into the rail path, that's the start point, and here is the end point. Just click on this arrow here, or even the other one, to flip endpoints. So, click once. And now suddenly I have here my starting point for this railing. If I do finish now, there you have it. That's full width section is now on this end, where my railing is more visible. Alright, there you have it. Five little tips. Hopefully it can help you get railing done in Revit much quicker and easier. If you like more tutorials like this every single day, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, practice these tricks and I'll see you in the next video.